Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shawls. Today we have our final Armenian folktale of the week, and this one is a story that, well, that we've heard before. We've heard many times before in many different regions, but this one has an explanation hidden at its core. And since it's one about being good to animals, I figured that, well, it deserves to be told. This is The Sparrow and the Two Children. Vart was the name of a boy who was six years old, and Vartui was the name of his sister, who was five years of age. Vartini, their dear mother, had died, and Vartan, their father, had brought home a stepmother, who had with her a boy of her own, four years old. Vartan was a well-to-do farmer, and as he loved his children, he brought them nice suits of clothes and dresses, delicious food, pretty toys, and many other presents. The stepmother, being an envious woman, envied the little half-orphans and wished to destroy them, that she might secure every good thing for her own child. In order to attain her vile purpose, she secretly boiled the seed which her husband was to sow in the field that year. The wheat, of course, did not grow, and as there was no crop, the farmer had to borrow to meet his expenses. The following year, she played the same treacherous trick, and increased the farmer's indebtedness so much that the poor man, giving up every hope of the farm, went away to sojourn in other countries to earn money. That was what the wicked woman desired with all her heart. She fed her son with meat and pies, and while she gave the half-orphans only a handful of boiled wheat to eat. One day, she decided to take Vart and Vartui to the river as if to bathe them, and there to drown them. That day, the two innocent half-orphans had taken their handful of boiled wheat and were eating it in the corner of the yard. They saw a very small sparrow, which was jumping and hopping around them and chirping and chattering as it leaped. Vart wanted to kill it with a stone, but Vartui prevented him. As they were eating their poor, scanty meal, they listened to the little birdie, and lo, they thought they could understand what it was chirping. Orphans, little orphans, good little orphans, the little sparrow was saying, give me a few grains which I may take to my little ones in the tiny nest, and I will give you good counsel. The children cast a few grains to the bird, which after taking them to its nest came back, saying, Run, orphans, run! Your stepmother will today take you to the river to drown you. Run, orphans, run! And the little sparrow flew away. Soon the stepmother came, saying, Get up, you dirty things. We will go to the river where I may bathe you. Y- you go first, Mama. We will come by and by, answered the orphans. And following the advice of their little feathered friend, they ran away to the mountains. The stepmother never searched for them, and the two children wandered in the forest until evening. At nightfall they entered the hollow trunk of an old sycamore tree, repeated the prayer that they had learned from their dead mother, and lay down to sleep embracing one another. Soon after daybreak the faithful sparrow came, and the two children waking heard it chirp to them, Orphans, good orphans, come and eat, there is boiled wheat for you. They immediately got up and ran after the sparrow, which led them until they came to where an old woman had brought a kettleful of boiled wheat and, emptying it under a tree, went away. A great many little sparrows were gathered. The two half-orphans sat with them at the table. The good old woman used to bring the kettleful of wheat and empty it under that tree every day. She did this in memory of her children and her grandchildren who had died when they were young boys and girls, and whom she had loved very much. She believed that these little birdies were the spirits of her dead little ones. So these half-orphans lived with the little sparrows for a long time. One day, as the prince was hunting in the forest, he met Vart and Vartui, took them with him to the palace, loved them and adopted them as his son and daughter. The children were so pretty and amiable that all the court loved them dearly. But Vart and Vartui were not happy. What is the matter with you, my children? asked the prince. What is the cause of your grief? We long to see our dear papa, who has gone away, 
answered Vart. And we long to see the little sparrow, our benefactor, added Vartui. The prince sent out men in search of Vartan, the father of the children, and finding him, brought him home. He punished his wife for her wickedness and embraced his children. The prince kept him also as a messenger in the court. But who could find the sparrow? It came by itself one day, and alighting on the window where the orphans were, chirped, You blessed little orphans! You pitied my little ones and gave me grain, and lo, heaven has bestowed upon you so many bounties. May you continue to be blessed and to be happy. The prince liked the little sparrow for its good services and permitted it to build its nest thereafter under the eaves of the palace. All sparrows, which at the present time build their nests under the eaves of houses, are descendants of that good sparrow. Let us be good even to the sparrows, and they may bring good to us. And that is the Armenian folktale from The Golden Maiden and other folk stories and fairy tales told in Armenia of the sparrow and the two children. And here you have, again, the very classic stepmother trying to off her stepchildren. And yet, that's not really what this is about. It's about being good to the animals and such. It's a very Russian tale about being good to others, and good will come to you from them. And, you know, I like that story, I like that feeling, but I really like it in this case because it ends with the instruction of just be good to animals. Be good to animals. Nothing bad will happen to you if you are good to the animals. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere that you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And don't forget, if you'd like to help support the podcast, you can always head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject, where, for as little as a dollar a month, you'll get early access to every story told, as well as a little treat just from me. Next week, we'll be back with three new tales. As always, thank you so much for listening.